Hello and welcome to the second video tutorial on this 10 part video tutorials on the Drupal 7 Views module. I am Peter Worski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial, we're going to continue off with our last video tutorial where we went ahead and we created a view based on teasers uh, for our dog images. And what we did there was we pulled in uh, the teaser format for a specific content type, which had the image and the, um, and the um, a brief description that we had set up and this was all controlled when we went to content types, dog pictures, manage display because we were doing teasers. What we're going to actually do in this video tutorial is create a brand new view from scratch and I'm going to show you how to customize that from the actual views UI. So what we'll do is go ahead and go add new view and what we're going to call this is uh, Bailey pictures. Um, so if you're familiar with Drupal you know that we can tag our pictures so we were tagged all of our Bailey pictures as Bailey and you'll You'll also know that we could go ahead and do this with taxonomy. There will already be a view, but we're going to pretend like that doesn't exist and go ahead and do it ourselves. So we're going to show content. You remember we talked about this before. So this is our base table, which will be nodes because we're going to be pulling in nodes. Uh, more often than not, you'll be working with nodes. And some of the advanced tutorials, we'll, we'll take a look at the other tables. But for now, we'll just stick with content of type. Again, we're going to choose doc pictures. And we'll go with newest first. And we're going to create a page. And that page title is going to be Bailey Pictures. And we'll do this as dog, dog images slash Bailey pictures. Um, and I'll, I'll show you, we'll leave this as all uh, basic and I'll show you how to we modify that in, in the actual setup. Um, but we're creating a page. So let's go continue and edit. So once we do continue and edit, we get to the actual UI for our, our view. Um, and more often than not, when you're doing a specific view for your page or for your site rather, you're gonna be working within this UI. Um, and so for this video tutorial, we're going to actually walk through what these settings are uh, and we'll take a look specifically at the title, the formats, the content versus fields, um, actually adding fields, look at our sorts and look at our filters. Whereas in the next video tutorial, we'll look at really customizing the view with permissions, headers, footers, pages and whatnot. So first and foremost, you notice that we went ahead and we created a page. So we have this displays here and we have page and we can also add other views. Um, so we could add blocks, we could add another page. We'll be doing those in subsequent video tutorials, but just drawing your attention to that right now. So in terms of our page details, we have the display name page. So we're gonna call this, we're gonna modify this. We're gonna make this page daily images. And the reason why we're gonna do that, we could add a description, but the reason why we're gonna do that is because if we're adding to this view, we want to know what this specifically is when we're looking at this, right? So we look up here, this change from page to Bailey images. And that way, when we have multiple views, we'll have an idea of what we're actually looking at. So next thing we're going to take a look at is the unformatted list. When we created our view, we left it as unformatted. And you'll see we have a few options here. So right off of the bat, uh, views will come with a, a bunch of options out of the box. Slideshow shouldn't actually be here. This is a separate module, so ignore that one. But you know, we get the, uh, the form topic list, which I think is created by the advanced form module. So again, ignore that one, I apologize. But we have grid, HTML list, uh, table, unformatted, and I think jump menu is, is also uh, created there. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a table. In the previous video tutorial, we created a grid. So when you go to uh, TWD, dog images, you'll see that we have four images or rather four nodes across there and that's created by the grid itself. So we'll do a table to get an idea of what that looks like. We can apply and each time you actually apply a different format, you'll get a setup for that format. So you'll see here we're getting our layout in terms of our columns and whatnot. Uh, we'll come back to this in a subsequent video tutorial. But essentially, the more you add, the more that will be here, right, in terms of fields. So right now, we only have the one field, and that's why we're only seeing this. But we can also, uh, we can do some pretty cool things with that. And then you also have the ability to add row classes, override normal click sorting, that kind of thing. We can group on different fields and whatnot. So we'll just apply this right now. We're not going to change anything. So you'll notice, actually, after we choose table, we've lost our selection that we had, which was to display teasers. Um, so I'll actually show you what I'm talking about here just so you're aware. So if we go back to unformatted list and we apply this, and we just hit apply for our settings, you'll see here that we're showing content teasers, right? That's what we did here. We showed content teasers. Um, but if we go to the table, it actually flips it over to the fields. So it doesn't pull in the nodes themselves. We have greater control and we can choose what pieces of information are included. So right now only the content titles being included. 
So that's perfect for us. Let's walk through and I'll show you how you add fields and actually uh, you know, use some of the power of views. So let's go to add and we're going to add some of our filters here. And so we can look at the content, you know, the content revision, content statistics, what these are, the different types of information that's related to our nodes. These actually usually will respond to or correspond to different tables in our, in our uh, database. But the content itself, we can scroll through and we can see different things like the comment status, the comment count, the body, who the author was, all the taxonomy terms associated with this. So let's walk through and add a few. So right now we know we have the title, but we don't have the image, so we'll add that. We also need uh, the content for dogs, so which dog is it? Um, and I think what we'll do is we will include, we'll include the body, so that's the description, and we'll also include a, let's say the author UID, right? So something we didn't have previously to give an idea of kind of what we can do here. So we'll go ahead and we'll add these fields. And each time you add a field, you'll have the ability to configure that field. So I'll walk you through this. We're going to create a label. And so what this is, is it'll essentially when we have a table, it will be the, the, the title for that column in the table. So here, this is referring to the author UID. So we're actually going to, uh, you know, put this in as author, right? Um, and the colon after, this won't apply to a table. But, you know, if you were doing inlines and uh, inline, I mean, you know, you have the author beside the actual value, the label beside the value, you can add a colon. So I'll just go ahead and remove that. Um, we're going to actually include this in the display. You can load stuff and exclude it from the display. And you'll see in the advanced, uh, some of the advanced videos, why we would do that. But if you're doing dates and that kind of thing, you want to format them specially, you can do that. So you could load a month, but then exclude it. Um, interesting things to do there. But here, because we're doing actual author, we have the option to link this field to the user. So you can click on this author and then go see the user profile. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Now, with most, but not all of the fields, you'll have this thing, style settings. And so what this actually allows us to do is theme the field. Uh, so we can add some custom CSS to this. So make it look a certain, uh, you know, give it a look and feel. Uh, and we'll be covering this off in future videos, but here's the ability to do that. And so let's say we wanted to customize the label. Again, create a CSS class. We could use uh, some existing ones here, headers, that kind of thing. But again, another video tutorial. The no results behavior. So obviously, uh, you know, we're always going to have an author, but if we didn't, we could include some text there to say, you know, maybe this is a comments field, most recent comments or something like that. We can say, you know, no comments, uh, but we're not going to be doing that, obviously. And then you have the options surrounding that. So hide if empty. So again, if we don't have a body, let's just remove the entire field, uh, that kind of thing. In terms of the rewriting results, so. Uh, one of the things I talked about before was, you know, if, if we hid uh, a value, uh, we could then rewrite the results of another field and pull in that value, right? So if we were doing a date, we could do some cool things. Uh, and that's the option here. So if we click that, we automatically get a box where we can rewrite things. Um, and you'll see we have replacement patterns. So we can actually pull in the different fields that are already loaded. Um, again, kind of powerful, but beyond the scope of this video tutorial, it's just being a beginner's look at view for video tutorial two. Uh, we can also obviously output this as a link, trim it to a maximum value. So this is good when we're doing the body. I'll show you that. We can strip some HTML tags, remove the white space, and convert new lines, right? Um, and then lastly, we have the more, which again, just an administrative title for this. So we're not going to be using that, but there is the option. So we can go ahead and it says apply to all displays. What this means is if we had a bunch of different pages uh, or different, um, I guess, uh, view types within our view, uh, we could apply this to all, but we only have the one, so, so that's fine. So we're going to apply to our default, which we don't really see, as well as our page. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And again, same thing here. We have the body. So we'll actually refer this to refer to this as the description, right? And so it's going to be the default formatter. But obviously, we could use plain text. We could do trim, summary, right? So we have some options there to play with uh, right out of the box. But again, styling settings. We're not going to play with anything, no results. All of this is pretty much the same uh, because it's all related to uh, a, a certain handler that Views has. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll hit apply. And then we have a label. We'll create that label. Again, it's a link. So it's going to link to a field, right? Uh, a link to another page, which are all related to Bailey, but we're actually creating that page. So, um, so we'll leave that. We can go ahead and hit apply because we've seen the other settings. 
And then lastly, we have the image. So image is going to be a little bit different because it's actually going to be formatting an image. So you'll see we'll have different options here. So the formatter is going to be image. The image style that we're going to choose, these image styles correspond to the styles that are on our site. I'll show you those in a second. But we'll use the, the thumbnail. And we're going to link the image to the actual content. Right? And so we have these options with style settings, which are all the same. We've got the no results, which again, no different. And the rewrite, which again, no different. In terms of more, we do have a little bit of a different uh, difference because we can do the click sorting based on a number of different attributes. Um, click sorting, this is going to refer to our table, so we can sort the table by the different images. Um, and we could do that on the, you know, the alternative description, the title of the image that we gave when we created it, the width and the height. So we'll just leave it as FID. So FID is the actual ID of the file. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit apply. And now what happens is we actually get views will provide us with a preview of what our view will look like if we were to save this. So title will be Bailey's picture. And you'll see here we have a title, which obviously doesn't have a label. So we have a problem there. Then we have the author UID. So this is all one, right? Which is a little bit of a problem because we want to see the author's name, not their author UID. That really doesn't help us. So I'll show you how to change that. But then we've got the description. We've got the dog that we're looking at. And then we've got the images. So obviously we have a problem because we just wanted to show Bailey pictures, but we're getting Bailey and Susie here. So we've got to add a filter. So if we go back up, let's start making our changes here. So obviously in fields, we have to add a label. So I'm going to refer this to uh, picture name, right? And I'll apply that. The author UID, we're going to actually remove this field. So we can go ahead and hit remove. And then we're going to add a new field, which is going to actually be the author. So one of the interesting things about doing video tutorials on the fly is that obviously you learn something um, and sometimes you screw up. So we actually can't pull in the author name without creating a relationship. Uh, and a relationship is a bit beyond the scope of this video tutorial, so we're not going to do that. Uh, we'll leave it as the content author UI, but actually in our fifth video tutorial, or actually I think it'll be six is what it looks like, uh, we'll be covering relationships. So for now we'll leave it as the author UI. In future video tutorials I'll, have, I'll show you how to pull that in. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll just add this to the display. So we have it back. And we'll just leave this as author. So sorry for getting our head as ourselves there, but um, taking it back to the fact that we have Bailey and Susie pictures, what we have to do is go on to our filters. So every time we create a view, essentially if we're doing content, more often than not, you're going to want to make sure that you have the content being published. So that's a filter. So essentially what the filter is, is if you think about it, we're going to pull in all of this content that's in our database. And then from there, we're going to selectively narrow down what we want to see. So our first filter is we have all of these nodes, all of these pictures. We want to make sure that they're published. We might have nodes out there that we, you know, we've created on our site. We're waiting for one thing or another. We haven't published them, so we don't want them to be seen. So we would add in content published. The other thing is that we did automatically when we created this view was we chose the type to be dog pictures. So um, we just want to make sure that it's pictures of Bailey and Susie that are being seen, not other things that we might have on the site. And so on the site here, we have um, slideshow images. We don't want those to be seen here. Those were created in another tutorial. Don't want them included here. So I'll show you how to add another filter, which will actually filter out Susie pictures. So we'll go ahead and we'll go add. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to choose content dog, right? And so this is my field that I set up, which refers to which dog that I'm looking at and actually relates to a taxonomy term. So if I go ahead and I add this, so we're going to choose autocomplete, hit apply. And then here is one of, and the reason why I chose autocomplete is because I know what I'm looking for. So if I type in Bailey, I'm going to get my Bailey option. And so we have the option to um, define this filter as the pitch, the piece of content is either going to be one of Bailey, or it's going to be all of specific term. You can choose none of, so anything but Bailey. Um, you know, is empty. So if we didn't have a field, we can say, you know, if it didn't have a field, show that. That might be good for administrative purpose to make sure we're, uh, if it wasn't mandatory to have that, which content did or didn't have it, is not empty. So again, we want to see all fields that are there that have, that have been tagged um, for whatever reason. 
And this reduce duplicates is something we can discuss later, but this is sometimes helpful for seeing multiple things. Uh, and there are various scenarios where that can occur, but we'll, we'll look at those in later video tutorials. Um, and again, we have the, the more section here, which we're not really going to use, uh, but just flagging it for you. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit the apply. And now we're going to get the auto preview because we've made changes. So if we scroll down, we'll see that we've got the picture, the description, the dog, the author, and somewhere along the line, I've removed the actual picture of Susie. So got to go back up there and add that. Oops, sorry about that. And now we've got it back. So we've just got Bailey here, we've got our author, we've got our image. Uh, so things are starting to look good. One thing I'll, I'll flag for you here is if, you know, if we forgot to add content type equal dog pictures, we could add that ourselves by going to add. And you'll see it's within contents. So we can actually uh, reduce the additional ones, but we'll go content, we'll scroll down and we're looking for something called type. So content type, so for example, so we would add that and go to add display. And then again, we have our options here is one of, and we would choose dog pictures, but obviously we already have it. This is in the event that, you know, maybe you forgot on the, on the first go around when we're setting up this view. So we'll just go ahead and, and remove this because we don't need an additional one. So right now we've looked at the format. Well, we've looked at the title, the format, the fields, Filter criteria. now we're only gonna look at sort. So this obviously is the way that our images will be presented to users. So right now it is being presented as the post date um, uh, descending order, right? So we can change this if we wanna keep it as post date and we can do it as ascending order, right? And we can do this per the minute, per second, as granular as we'd like to get. So we can apply this. And we'll see that things have kind of been swapped up here. But we can also do, you know, some crazy or other sorts. Um, so just looking at things, we could do the number of content or comments that are there or the last comment time. So if we want to have our most active uh, piece of content float to the top, we could do that. Um, you know, we could do this sorting by the author UID if we had multiple authors on here. Um, the interesting thing too is now that we've gone ahead and we've added additional fields, we can go back to our table and go to settings. And we can do this is sorting, this is sorted, this is sortable. And so all of these now can be sorted if a user is looking at our table. So if we go ahead and we apply this, you'll see that each one of these now, we can go quick description and now it's sorted. We can click dog, obviously they're all Bailey, or we can sort by the image. Remember that that's where we're looking at the FID. So if this were the title, you could sort by that but it also switches everything up. So that's one of the neat things about uh, tables. So if I go back to the settings, I'll just walk you through. Um, when we added all of our fields, they all end up becoming configurable here. And we see that they're all in their own column. They're all aligned a certain way. So we could, if we wanted to, put the picture name in the center, the left, right. We have some pretty fine grained um, controls right out of the box when we choose a table. Um, the separator is interesting. So what I'll show you here, let's do um, right now they're in two different columns for picture name and picture description, but let's put them in the same column. Um, and I won't change anything beyond that, but let's go ahead and we'll hit apply and see what happens. So now I've got one after the other. Um, but let's say I wanted to add an additional space for, for some reason. So I can go here and add a BR tag. Actually, let's add an HR tag. That's probably a little bit more representative. So we'll add a horizontal line to separate the two of them. Um, and this is obviously still gonna be sortable and ascending. So remember, we were talking about this. We could do descending, ascending if we were doing this. Um, and obviously the default sort, um, you can set that. So if we go ahead and we hit apply, you'll see here we've got Bailey in her house. Then we've got a separator, and then we've got the description. Right, so that's kind of interesting because sometimes you'll have a column and you put two things together and they'll line up, they'll butt. And you could use a BR tag and separate them, have them on different lines. Um, so that's really the extent of this video tutorial. I just wanted to introduce you to the title, the format, the fields, the filter, and the sort. Those are all the basic settings for any view that you're going to be creating. Uh, in the next video tutorial, we'll actually take a look at 
these settings here in the middle, which are, you know, specifically changing up our path, adding things to a menu, doing our access permissions, but also adding headers, footers, and manipulating the pager. So again, this is just a basic tutorial. We're probably not going to get to advanced things until maybe the fourth or fifth video tutorial. Fourth, we'll be looking at, you know, actually creating pages, blocks, and attachments. Um, and then in the fifth, we'll look at actually theming views. Uh, so I hope this helps if you're brand new to views. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit more advanced, I say probably wait till the fourth or fifth video tutorial uh, and then jump into the series. But until then, uh, leave a comment. Let me know how these are helping you. Always appreciate the thumbs up and I love hearing from people uh, letting me know if these are helping out. Um, so again, leave a comment, let me know, and we'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thanks very much.